Have you ever had a problem with art? Do you feel like your characters are too stiff, bland, and in need of flavor? Well, you've come to the right place. Hi, I'm Phil Tomato, and I'll be your art chef. Let's add some flavor, some spice, some umami, if you will, so that we can make your art a little bit more palatable. Palatable? Pla pla palatable. Now, I know what you're thinking. Tomato, I've done some gesture work on my art, but I just don't seem to get it. <laughs> or my hand's moving too much. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get used to this whole YouTube thing, and uh, I get nervous. I flail my arms around like Squidward a lot, so I hope you guys don't mind that. So, without further ado, DJ, please play that uh, no copyright corporate happy ukulele music, please. The ukulele, ukulele. So, going back to what we were talking about, let's talk about gesture. Gesture is a movement, a way to express something. It's easy to overlook how important gesture is, but without it, your drawing is hard to read and can feel a little bit stiff. Now don't worry guys, I'll help you how to create fluid art. Wow. Not what you think. Not what you think. While I was editing this video, I just realized my energy was way too low, and they said that if you want to have like a successful YouTube video, you should have a, a good energy flow going when you're uh, talking to people so what's up everyone wait that's way too much <laughs> anyway um let's uh i want i want to show you guys what i'm all about and i want to show you guys what i've been working on and i want to show you how important gesture is to bring some life to your art i'm sure you guys seen this velma drawing that i did a couple of months ago like it was all around and everybody did an amazing job creating some uh, of their own draw this in your style challenge and uh, I'm, I was super overwhelmed by the amount of talented people who did this. And uh, yeah, I was just super overwhelmed. And um, looking at this drawing right now, you might notice that um, even though it's kind of like a simple drawing of uh, Velma over here, just standing and lifting her um, her jacket, there's a lot of fluidity around it. Like, for example, on the hand area, like the gesture on the hand, I made sure that uh, there were a lot. there's a lot of curves and... The, the hand gesture made sense, you know, because, you know, I could just have drawn, I could have just made her just lift her, 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 uh, jacket or, or turtleneck just like that, really stiff, but I made sure to raise the pinky and, uh, made, extended the thumb so that, uh, there's more, like, there's more movement to the drawing. And uh, when you think about it, the hand is one of the things that carries the gesture of this art piece. So I'm really quite proud of this. And here's a here's an example of uh, uh, just the head of a character. There's not a lot of things going on in this drawing, but uh, as you can see, I made sure that the hair actually has like a lot of flow to it, a lot of drama. This is actually pretty interesting because this was like a redrawn challenge thing. Well, this was a challenge I wanted to. Uh, start but uh you guys want to see how it looks like wow this was my drawing all those years ago look how amazing it is it's good right gotta make sure everybody knows my signature is there don't want people stealing it with my lens flare and everything if you guys want to actually see the process of this drawing from start to finish you can check out my twitch the link is down below and uh you can see how i created this from start to finish it would take me a longer time to establish a pose than, than actually rendering the art. That's how important pose is for me. And that's where I really think that gesture plays a really big part in creating a really successful drawing. So here's an example of my drawing where I actually simplified the line art and focused more on the fluidity of the art piece rather than anything else. If you simplify a drawing to its essence and just focus on that, you can make for a much more interesting, a much more personal drawing. Less is more, you know. Have you ever had those times when you overwork an, an art piece and it's like polishing a turd? That's how it felt like back then. Not now. Well, sometimes I still feel that way. Like when I get carried away with my drawings. Yep. <laughs> so here's an interesting one. Um, uh, yeah, like I'm a huge fan of gorillas and I just wanted to see if I can uh, create uh, a, uh, a, a 
I just wanted to see if I can create Gorilla's X Street Fighter art. So here's uh, Murdoch getting kicked in the in the uh, in the balls by Chun Li, <laughs> and uh, 2D dressing up as Poison, and Murdoch dressing up at I mean Russell dressing up as uh, Hugo. I miss Street Fighter. They should really make Street Fighter. You know what? They should really make re. They should recreate Rival Schools. I don't know if you guys are uh, know about Rival Schools back in the day, OG days of PS1, Rival Schools was the shit, and I really want to play it again. Capcom, if you're hearing this, please, Rival Schools, we need it. We need Rival Schools. But I digress. Enough show and tell. It's time for me to show you. The secrets finally revealed. Is that too much? <laughs> Tip number one. Group your lines. Now it's really easy to go about your way and do the drawing as you normally would without thinking about gesture, but uh, I'll give you a few tips. Now here we have our girl 2B here from the video game Nier Automata. Automata? Never, never mind. And uh, I'm going to show you the subtleties of how and what makes this drawing as fluid as it is. So let's just go in and um, lower the opacity a bit so that I could show you the guidelines much, much better. When I created this, I think about grouping the lines a whole lot because it's really important. Check this out. Instead of individually thinking about, you know, where the lines are, where the neck line is, where the traps are, then I need to think about the the shoulders and you know the butt and the bicep and the tricep it's really easy to get carried away with it and become anal retentive yes that is a word become anal retentive with the details but i would suggest you simplify everything and connect all the lines so look at that see how everything seems like it's all flowing like the the lines are few and far between it seems like uh it seems like it's all connected somehow. One of the reasons why I do this is because if you have less lines and less clutter, it's really easy for the the eye to flow around the drawing. So if you could get away with combining the line from the, of the neck, the the chest area, the stomach, and the leg. See how flowy it is? Instead of individually creating uh, the lines, all over the place I think about grouping important stuff and just making it seem like everything is just with one fluid motion gather your lines I mean group your lines and your drawing is gonna be a much stronger for it tip number two please 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 stop scratching your lines like you're scratching off a lottery ticket seriously stop stop it are you one of the people who draws like this like when they're drawing something they just have like really scratchy lines this is a really really bad habit don't do this you will have a much better drawing if your lines are strong deliberate and sexy and the only way you should be doing this is when you're establishing the sketch and never do this as your final drawing because it's super horrible now if you can only do this like I said if you're doing a uh, the sketching part so what you could do is finish the sketch like so lower the opacity and use a really broad line stroke like this because it shows that you're confident You are a strong person. You don't need no one. And it is a mark of a professional. I want you to do is practice doing this. Deliberate line strokes. And you take what you learned from the previous tip, which is group all the lines. And apply it to clean line art. Don't use scritchies. I don't know why I use that word scritchies. But I don't use that have deliberate lines and group all the lines see how I applied the line grouping technique here look how the lines are grouped from the fingers down to the forearms all the way to the shoulder it even goes around the entire body like it's one 
fluid motion. It's just really graceful to look at. It's much better to look at compared to how messy sketches are. And I promise you, if you keep doing this, if you keep practicing this technique, where you keep your lines uh, short, sweet, concise, and clean, you will have a much, much more sexier drawing. You're going to be a better artist for it. So the last technique that I'm going to show you is one of the most important ones that you can learn right now. And it is exaggerate. Now what I mean, exaggerate, this is what I mean. Let's say you're creating a head. When you're creating a head, you would create, you know, the neck this long and the shoulder this long. And you make the clavicle and the torso, you know, and uh, the chest area. And uh, yeah, that seems like a normal human animal body, wouldn't you say? But the thing is, if you adhere to the rules and the, pr and, uh, the proportions of how the human body is, like, let's say, for example, you based your body off of the Andrew Loomis book, which is an amazing book to learn from. It's going to look like a like a decent head, but you can cause more damage if you exaggerate certain things. Let me show you what I mean. Create the head like this one. Make the eye closed because I don't know why I like drawing the eyes closed. And you extend the neck so long that it goes beyond the realms of reality. Unpro it's, it's not proportionate, but look how graceful that is. You sacrifice reality for style. And you know what? Our purpose as artists is not to copy reality, but to improve upon it. I forgot who said that, but I think but it's a really good saying. So if you exaggerate certain things like the neck to accentuate a, a certain action, it's going to be a much better drawing. Let's say we apply this to the human body, you know, and I'm going to make the, the torso. Normally people would draw the torso like this. Yeah, like it's, you know, there's the chest and there's the rib cage and there's the, the, the stomach area and there's the, the rump section. It looks good. It looks like a decent drawing. But it looks rather boring because it adheres to the proportions of reality. So here's what we're going to do. What are we going to do? Say it with me. Exaggerate. <laughs> so, stupid. so I'm going to extend the hand like this. Maybe extend the torso way longer than it should be. It might not adhere to reality, but it improves upon it. And, on that, and in that turn, it improves your gesture. Whenever you're thinking about drawing something, remember this. Exaggerating form is much better than adhering to reality. Because you know why? Reality is boring. And your job as an artist is to uh, improve upon reality and find beauty in the subtlety. Let's just, you can even exaggerate the arms. Let's just say this is the arms, yeah? I'm, I'm gonna make it like noodle arms exaggerate it exaggerate the 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 gesture i'm gonna make the the fingers like that i'm gonna i'm gonna make the the digits really really spindly is that the word and look at that it might not adhere to the rules of reality but it's gonna make for a much more pleasing to look at stylistic choice if you guys like what you see, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. I stream on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We have a Discord community. The link should be down there below. I have a Patreon. All my social links are down there. And uh, guys, check it out. And uh, hopefully I'll make a new video if you guys like what you see. Support me. Let's see what happens. Let's speak some magic. Cheers, guys. Bye. Well, if you like what you... Hey, guys. So if you like... If you guys like what I saw, please like, comment, and subscribe.